Money-weighted versus time-weighted rates of return. There is a significant difference between money-weighted and time-weighted rates of return. The new CRM2 rules require financial institutions to provide you with a money-weighted return, which can be considered your personal rate of return on your money invested. A money-weighted rate of return takes into account your contributions, reinvested distributions, charges to, and withdrawals from your portfolio over time. These are collectively known as cash flows and can affect your personal rate of return. Let's look at a simple hypothetical example to explain how money-weighted rates of return differ from time-weighted returns. Let's start with the time-weighted rate of return calculation. This is the calculation shown, for example, on mutual fund marketing materials. Let's say we have a mutual fund that does really well in its first year and increases by 25%, but in year two, the fund loses 20%. To figure out the time-weighted return, which ignores the timing of contributions or withdrawals, we can use any lump sum investment amount and see what would happen to it over these two years without adding or taking away money during this period. If we use a starting lump sum of $100,000, it would gain 25% or $25,000 in year one. So now we start year two with $125,000. If we lost 20% in year two, then $125,000 times 20% is $25,000, which brings us right back to $100,000 or no overall gain over the two years. Therefore, the rate of return using a time-weighted calculation would simply be 0%. Now let's take a look at the money-weighted rate of return calculation. And remember, this calculation is affected by when you add or take money away. So using the exact same investment, let's see what the rate of return would be using a money-weighted methodology. Instead of putting in $100,000 to start, we put $50,000 into the fund at the beginning of each year. In year one, our initial $50,000 earns 25% and grows to $62,500. Now, we put in another $50,000. Adding that to $62,500 gives us $112,500 invested at the beginning of year two. But we know that year two sees a loss of 20%. 20% times $112,500 is $22,500, and that brings us down to $90,000. Since we had less money invested during the good first year period, and we had more money invested during the bad second year period, our money-weighted rate of return is actually negative 6.83%. As you can see, even when using the exact same fund performance, you can end up with two very different rate of return calculations. If there were no cash flows during the period, then these two rates would actually be identical. But as soon as you take into account the timing of your contributions or withdrawals, they will start to differ. That's why money-rated returns are sometimes considered to be personal rates of return.